My name is Matthew McKenzie. I serve here at Celebrate Recovery. And why I think serving is so important is all throughout the Bible, we, we see that Jesus serves everyone. And I think as a believer and a Christian that it's so important that we serve others just like Jesus did. And, and doing so is such a blessing, putting others above yourself and, and just being a true servant. And uh, that's why I enjoy serving. I serve because I love God. I love the feeling that it gives me when I do serve. It's, uh, it's a blessing beyond any measure. I love serving in the kitchen and in CR because this is the one opportunity that our church family has to reach out and touch three to four hundred families in our community a month. And it does. The, the small kitchen that we have, we touch three to four hundred families a month in our church. And it is my pleasure. The Lord was a servant. I want to be a servant of the Lord. And this has been a blessing to me and my family. That's why we like serving in the kitchen. Good evening, I'm Miranda, and I am so excited to share with you all a principle that we find in God's Word that when we apply it to our lives, it really does change everything. Have you ever felt sad or down, just felt like you couldn't shake it off, or maybe felt overwhelmed, um, just stressed out by life, maybe disconnected, not sure where you fit in? How about relationship troubles? Anybody ever experienced some relationship troubles? Maybe you and your spouse aren't getting along as well as you used to, not feeling as connected to your children as you would like, or maybe there was a friendship that had a falling out and having trouble figuring out how to repair that, or a coworker that you just can't seem to see eye to eye with. Well, we've probably all experienced things like that. I know that I have at, at times, and Jesus knew that we would experience those things also. So he outlined in his word, and he was an example for us of a principle that when applied, it can change the world around us, increase our personal happiness, and improve every relationship that we will ever have, every single one. That's pretty impressive. We're gonna start with John chapter 13. And we'll start with verse 3 tonight. This tells the account of the Last Supper. This was Jesus' final meal with his disciples before he was crucified. Now, in Bible times, there was some etiquette that was a little different than what we're used to today. One of those things was when people arrived at a home, there was usually a servant there to offer to wash their feet. There was a basin and a towel because people walked everywhere. They walked on muddy roads, dusty roads, usually in sandals. So when they would arrive at their destination, their feet would be very dirty, and usually there was a servant who would offer to wash their feet for them. So let's look in chapter 13 of John. We'll start with verse three. Um, verse two has said that, that supper was over. So they were there, they were eating together. Supper was over. Verse three, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So Jesus knew who he was. It tells us in verse 3, he knew that he had been given supreme power. He knew of his divine origin. He knew where he was going. But yet he still chose to take on the role of a servant. Culture says that as we become more powerful, more successful, that we will be served. We will be served and catered to. But Jesus all-powerful, took on the role of a servant. He was our example. Let's look, skip down to verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. 
Now, the disciples could have done this. When they arrived there for that dinner and there wasn't a servant available to wash their feet, one of the disciples could have offered and said, hey, I'll, I'll do this, but none of them did. You know, this might have been the first century a long time ago, but people were still people, even back then. The scripture tells us of a conversation that they had had a little previously to this where they were discussing amongst themselves who was the greatest, who's the greatest disciple. That's more like our sinful nature is to worry about who's the greatest among us rather than who gets to be the servant. But Jesus knew that he was going to be an example of that for us because our culture and everything inside of us would be pushing us the other direction. But he knew that choosing to be a servant, we could honor our Heavenly Father and build strong, healthy relationships. We are biologically wired to benefit from serving each other. Our brains receive more benefits from serving than we even do when we are served. You know, it feels good when we are down, when we are struggling, or maybe when it's a special occasion for someone to come alongside and, and serve us, pamper us, but it feels even better to be the person that gets to serve. Depressed, struggle with sadness, feeling down, find a way to serve others. The area of our brain that produces dopamine and serotonin, which are mood boosters, that area of our brain lights up when we serve other people. Feeling stressed, serving others has caused, is shown to um, lower blood pressure and help us deal with stress better than we would otherwise. There's been over 40 international studies done that show that people who serve others regularly, who volunteer regularly, live years longer than people who don't. Again, it is no wonder that Jesus said it's better to give than receive. Let's look at verse 15 one more time. John chapter 13, verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Jesus was telling his disciples and telling us today to shift from the desire to be served to serving others. When we do that, we grow in our commitment and it strengthens our relationships and honors God. What would the world look like if everybody set out to serve others? What would our church look like, our families look like, if that was a priority to serve others? We look at three areas where we can choose to serve. And the first one is our home. Ever heard the, the saying, home is where the heart is? It's also where we let our guard down a lot of times. You know, out in the world, we're on our best behavior. Probably tonight at small group, if there was one delicious looking cookie sitting there, probably we would hang back and make sure no one else wanted it. But hey, if we were at home, we might have just snatched that thing up and stuck it in our mouth real quick before anybody else could get to it. Out in the world, we're on our best behavior. But at home, again, we can let our guard down. And sometimes we get home from a long day, we're tired, we just want to relax. We don't want to serve. But it's very important that we serve those in our home, in our families. We see oftentimes in marriages, but this can hold true for any relationship. You know, when the relationship first begins, we're all in. We're giving 100%. We're serving that other person. But then as, as time goes by and as life happens and things get stressful, maybe we start to feel like, you know, I think he's not serving me and giving 100% to me anymore. So. I'm not going to give 100% if he's not going to give 100%. So what happens? We kind of pull back. Well, then that other person says, well, she's pulling back. I'm going to pull back. I'm not going to give 100% if she's not giving 100%. And so there it goes, kind of a nosedive. The way that we can counteract that, though, is to choose to serve. Even if we're angry, even if we're upset, choose to serve. Jesus washed the feet of Judas, and he knew that Judas was going to betray him, but he still chose to serve. That co-worker we can't get along with, choose to serve. Siblings, adolescents, if you're here tonight at small group and you have trouble getting along with your siblings, choose to serve. Do their chores for them one day. 
hey, at the very least, it'll really freak them out. So that'll be fun, right? But again, choosing to serve can totally change the dynamics of our relationships, every relationship that we have. Another place that we can choose to serve is the church. We've all been given giftings, and the Lord wants us to use those to promote his kingdom, to further his kingdom. Everybody has got giftings that can be used in the church. It'll help you feel connected to your church family. You know, if we're gonna be part of the family, we gotta help out with the household chores, right? That's what families do. So serving in the church helps us feel connected to one another. How do we do that? We have to explore, what, what are my giftings? You know, if you're not sure, put some, put some thought into that. Put some time into thinking through, you know, what are my giftings? And then talk to a leader in the church. This is what I feel like my giftings are. Where can that be used to serve God's kingdom? I, there was a lady who started coming to our church and she told her small group leader, she went to small group and she said, I wanna be involved. I can cook and I can clean. I wanna be involved. And the small group leader said, oh, I know exactly who to connect you with. And so this lady, she comes every Thursday night and serves. She cooks and she cleans and she's such a tremendous blessing to some of the ministries that we have here at New Life Church. Someone else came to me recently and said, I'm really good at organizing things. I feel like that's a gifting and I wanna use that for God's kingdom. Let me help you. Let me take some things off of your plate and kind of get things organized. And what a tremendous blessing that that has been because that is not one of my giftings. But I've got a sister in Christ, that's her gifting. And so she's coming alongside me and helping with some ministry stuff. And it's been tremendous. That's the way the church works. We use our giftings. So we find out what our giftings are, we ask leaders in the church, you know, where can, where can I be plugged in? And then the last thing we do is make a commitment to lifelong serving. The way we serve in one season of life may look completely different than the way we would serve in another season of life, but we are still committed to serving. Lastly, the community. When we choose to serve people that are outside of our family, outside of our friend circle, outside of our church, that opens doors. We show an example of Christ's love for people and it opens doors for ministry. When we start to reach out and serve others, not expecting anything in return, it catches them off guard. And the Lord can use that to open doors for conversations about Him. You know, a few years ago when we started delivering some meals to some local businesses, they were so caught off guard and one of the owners, he brought me in his office and he said, now, why are you doing this again? And that opened the door for a conversation about why indeed we were doing that. And that was to show the love of Christ. So serving the community, it opens doors. We honor God and we're able to show his love. I am so glad that I get to serve alongside some of the greatest people in the world. And that is my New Life Church Family. I hope you guys have a great time of discussion.